Welcome to Five Stripe Weekly. Another original Five Stripe is gone. We give our reaction and answer a mega mailbag. All that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Stripe fam. I'm AJ and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. This video is sponsored by Burr Burr Sushi. Burr Burr Sushi is a Japanese inspired fast casual eatery that offers ramen, sushi burritos, and poke bowls. Burr Burr delivers cuisine that's ethical, delicious, and fast. Guests can create their own rice bowls and sushi burritos through an array of fresh vegetables, marinated meats, and quality sauces. Also now serving a collection of traditional Japanese ramen. So the big shoe has dropped the saga with Julian Gressel and Atlanta United has come to an end, to a very bitter end, it seems like. Yeah. And Julian Gressel is officially going to DC United, a rival of ours. A <laughs> yeah. just, that not uh, the kind of move that we want, obviously. Right. But uh, we first heard news of it at 11 a.m. Uh, we are filming this on a Tuesday for full transparency. And that report came from Stephen Goff, also known as the Soccer Insider. Yep. And uh, basically, yeah, he broke the news. Uh, we were all speculating, yeah, is this uh, the best type of move for LA United? Um, and in terms of the uh, the actual allocation money, it is 1.1 million in allocation money. Right, and the way that breaks down, 650,000 up, up front in TAM, uh, 100,000 next year in, in 2021. And Tam as well, and then three hundred and fifty thousand in performance-based incentives. So basically, Julian Gressel has some targets, yeah, and which are fairly easy apparently. And yeah. so, in terms of that, uh, yeah, we get a bunch of Tam, great, but yeah, it's still an original five stripe. Right. It's a player that was a huge player for us in getting our three major trophies. Yeah. Uh, I think it's yeah. I mean, I think. Speaking for the both of us, he will be sorely missed uh, within not only the uh, the club, mm -hmm. the squad as a whole, the fan base for sure, and the community because he was uh, just an exemplary guy, I think. And uh, yes, contract standoff nonetheless. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that I think uh, will be missed by LA United fans for sure. Absolutely, and you know, like coming from the Super Draft and to have this start to his career, I mean, 35 assists in three seasons is nothing to sneeze at, you know what I mean? Like, make no mistake, we're losing a very good player, a, right. a main contributor, and then like off the field as well, you know, he had the golf charity, he was, uh, he was a fan favorite for sure. You know, I tweeted out about uh, when he lifted the trophy in front of the supporter shield. I'm sure a lot of us who was there remember, remember that him. moment. That was a tearjerker for me, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's He was like, the first to run over to the supporter section and lift the trophy for us. And yeah, yeah I, I think acknowledge that uh, the fans were such a big part of the success. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just so many countless moments and memories from Julian Gressel that uh, yeah, when I think about it, or I have very fond memories. And uh, he's a guy that worked tirelessly mm -hmm. when he was on the pitch. Yep. Uh, had elite numbers assist-wise. Yeah, one of uh, the best crossers in the league, hands down. Exactly, for <clears throat> sure. And that connection, that Joseph Martinez, Julian Gressel connection, right. that will also be sorely missed. Yep. Uh, but, you know, such is the, uh, the case of uh, a club, yep. you know, uh, and of a soccer club, a football club. It, is business and unfortunately MLS uh, has some salary structures yes. that prohibits kind of rewarding your players that are kind of exceeding their contracts and uh, that's the unfortunate part because I feel like if we were in a different league, yeah, sure, the, uh, you know, after that first year, he probably would have gone. Somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You a know, little bit of a pay raise. Yeah, you know, with all due respect, right, 100000 for a professional athlete at that level is, is Kind of peanuts, you know what I mean? And especially a player the level of Julian Gressel. Remember, he won MLS Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he would have, in a yes, in another structure, he would have absolutely gotten a raise instantaneously, and he would have been tied down because he would have been considered the future, you know, part of the future of the club. I feel right. like, but uh, still relatively young, 26 uh, in MLS years for sure, and, exactly. and also I think you know entering a prime. So yeah, I mean the best of Julian Gressel probably is yet to come. Right. But that doesn't uh, kind of, you know, 
the there are detractors and you know some people i think have valid points of uh the limitations in yes. uh julian gressel and you know in a setup for frank de boer right uh you know he is an elite level right wing back but right. in terms of the other flexibility that he provides he is yes uh solid and maybe serviceable at uh you know center mid um, or you know, right back. Right back, which is, uh, I mean, he hasn't ever really out and out started as a right back, so yeah. he's kind of played there in a pinch. Yeah. Uh, he's played in the uh, central attacking midfielder position as well. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, uh, you know, he's a guy that, and of course, yeah, right mid, but uh, he's a guy that has been, you know, just at any of the uh, points he's been used, very plug and play, so that's been fantastic. Right. But uh, obviously, if he was to be played in a more central role, his... Uh, touch maybe his control is yeah. not maybe uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired and yeah. so that is uh, kind of maybe the thinking here is that uh, yeah he's never been blessed with you know just incredible pace sure. uh, so he's a guy that has yeah you know a r really really great cross on him mm -hmm. uh, and so is that something that would age well right. I think generally yes but uh, you know some of the other aspects of his game uh, maybe don't fit the Frank de Boer type of thing uh, that he's looking forward, you know, to really implementing on a large scale. Sure. So. And yeah, you know, he is a versatile player, I would say. But then if you want to justify that raise, it's, you know, how much, uh, how big of a part of the setup is he going forward? And I think, you know, based on what we saw in the postseason, I think we're going to see more for the back, more 4-3-3 from the board. And so, yeah, it does call into question a little bit. What exactly is Gressel's best position in that setup? Is it, you know, is his best position even in that setup? Yeah. And also, you know, uh, reportedly from Stephen Goff is that uh, the contract talks haven't really, uh, you know, entered with uh, DC United quite yet and that they haven't finalize anything right so uh but he will be getting a substantial raise i mean exactly. anything is a substantial raise from 133,000. right uh and it would be at least over 500,000. so he will be getting his raise those people that were hashtagging pay the man he will get paid yeah and that is the the thing but he just won't be being paid as a five stripe and so that's uh, the unfortunate part is, yeah, I mean, a lot of us are broken up about it, mm -hmm. but uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know, this is just part and parcel. Yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, what Carlos Bocanegra said to the uh, media at 3.30 this, uh, this day as well, he said that uh, apparently there were... Uh, contract offers mm -hmm. uh, throughout the season and there were some negotiations whether they were substantial raises or not that's a whole other thing but uh, that Julian Gressel apparently asked for a trade mm -hmm. ultimately at the end of the day and that's very, that's very interesting um, yeah because I think you can read into that several ways as well is that uh, not only did he want to stay in MLS in that he also wants to probably play for the U.S. men's national team right. if he want, if he asked for a trade specifically, if you quote unquote trade and not a transfer to right. uh, a you know another league or you know another country. It's like yeah, that's you know intra MLS uh, in terms of the rules. Yeah, that's you know him going to a conference rival. I think that's really. It hurts even more. It hurts, yes, absolutely. Um, I think when Gressel made that comment earlier in the off season, you know, talked about wanting to stay in America, maybe try for the U.S. men's national team. I think that definitely changed the landscape in terms of these discussions because, right, he'd have to stay in the U.S. And I think to be fair, too, he's probably his value. I think would be most maximized if he stays right. in MLS. You know, so right, he, he's an elite level uh, assist maker in MLS. Yes. If he were to go to Europe, it, you kind of question in terms of. Uh, the level that he could play at and then again what's its best position you right know, that would come up again i think so yeah i mean yeah, i think it was in his best interest to stay in mls and carlos bocanegra did speak to that that he would uh and wanted to do right by the player in right. that sense and so yeah i mean it, it you know he gets his raise he still stays in america and in mls yeah uh it is doing right by him uh so it is a little bit difficult i mean in all that respect though it's yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I will say this too. In like, okay, a move to before there was floated out the possibility a move to Toronto, right? Sure. I would have been fearful <laughs> if that had yeah. gone through. You know what I mean? Right. Like Julian feeding Josie. You know, Toronto already knocked us out. 
in the previous season, that certainly I think would have improved. And, yeah, ha Pozuelo in that setup as well. Exactly. I mean, there's, yeah, exactly. some real danger, I feel like. In terms of DC, I just don't see that same structure. You know what I mean? Like, w if you look at DC the last couple of years, and specifically when they were good, it was with Wayne Rooney and Lucho Acosta hitting, you know, hitting his heights. But that didn't happen in 2019, and both of those players are gone now. So it's like, DC might be a playoff team, but we're still better than them. They shouldn't like, in terms of like threatening our position at the top of the East, DC should not do that in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think there's still some pieces away. Uh, I yeah. mean, of course he joins another five stripe uh, or former five stripe in Yamil Assad. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, even Yamil Assad posted on Twitter the uh, little celebration that they've had uh, previously in 2017. Right. That kind of like, oh. <laughs> jabbed in the, the, the chest a little bit. Feels, feels. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so in terms of that though, if they're both the wingers, which I would assume it could be, uh, I don't know, like, yes, I think the, um, you know, the, the play that they have is uh, plenty good for this league. I, you know, pace-wise, not exactly the most. Yeah, so, yeah um, not rug burners. Right, and so in terms of, you know, the players on their team, you know, in terms of their setup, I'm not really sure, you know, with Kamara and with Ariola, those are the guys that kind of uh, can put them over the top uh, to, yeah, really challenge us. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see, but yeah, exactly. uh, in <clears throat> terms of, um, yeah, where, uh, like, a replacement might come from as well, uh, there is, yeah, they brought in Brooks Lennon to kind of soften maybe this blow a little right. bit, uh, it seems like, because, yeah. And then you have Anton Walks that was also brought in. Uh, you have mm -hmm. Franco Escobar who can play the right wing back position and right back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are guys that can maybe at least play the position, maybe not to the elite degree that uh, Julian Russell was making assists, but yeah. uh, maybe they're trying to balance out that, that, uh, that squad a little bit. And so maybe that's a mindset. But with, yeah, that production, there still is a lot of assists being left on the table. Absolutely. There is the question though, can Julian Gressel thrive just as much with Ola Kamara as the striker versus Joseph Martinez? Right. So it's, yeah. It's one that, yeah, I think uh, typically with trade, I said the same thing with LGP. I think it's uh, just the best move for all parties at the time. I think this, probably will work out that way. We'll be curious to see though, like who actually thrives, you know, right. especially in terms of Gressel as an individual, like will he continue putting up 14, 15 uh, assists a season? Remains to be seen, you know? Right, and yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, like what Gressel, um, you know, was saying in terms of like, uh, he understood the restrictions of uh, the CBA and the, the league and whatnot. It's mm -hmm. the unfortunate part of it. He said his goodbyes to Atlanta. It was heartfelt. Uh, you know, I uh, you know I, I wish him nothing but the best, except for winning MLS Cup and beating Atlanta United. Yes, again. Yeah. <laughs> so they're basically you know, yeah. Uh, you know, he's a guy that will be a forever a five trap legend. Yes. But the you know when you face us. I hope you don't do well. Sorry, <laughs> just how it goes. But <laughs> no hard feelings. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you stay within the league. And uh, also, yeah, there were reportedly a, a couple offers for Julian Gressel within the league. So apparently, this was the best offer. And especially if you didn't go to uh, you know outside MLS. Yeah. I mean, this had to be at least either doing right by Gressel or. Uh, the best offer. Yeah, another part of this, uh, in terms of working within MLS restrictions, I think is the allocation money, right? Like in another league, we would name a price for our player, a team would say would match it or not, and then we would move forward. But this, you know, it's more it's more complicated. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so we have one point potentially 1.1 1. 1, 1. 1 million in TAM, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, does that free up moves going forward? I hope so. You know, right. I think I would hope that the Ross is not finalized now. Right, and especially I think yeah, between Darlington Nagby and Julian Gressel, you get about three million or so in terms of allocation money. That ain't too bad, especially mm -hmm. for Julian Gressel on the last year of his contract. So. Right. Yeah, that, uh, all in all, we have a lot of money to play with to, in terms of Garber bucks to, uh, <laughs> to really make some moves. And so really, we're now waiting on the FO 
And uh, on Carlos Bocanegra, I think primarily for mm -hmm. you know these moves, and I think yeah, Frank de Boer has some say. Uh, Darren Eels has some say in terms of probably more on the money side, asking Arthur Blanks maybe for sure. uh, how much and whatnot. But yeah, I think primarily Carlos Bocanegra, uh, yeah, he's got to make the right moves because there are a lot of people and a lot of fans that. Yeah, he, he knew going in that this was not going to be a popular move. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he has a lot to probably atone for, maybe in that <laughs> maybe respect for, in some of uh, the Five Stripes uh, fans' eyes. So. Yeah, you know, I can uh, I can appreciate the angst. I understand, especially you lose, like, mm -hmm. two very popular players, two, two day ones, you know? But uh, I'm not quite there in terms of uh, worried yet, and I still trust in the front office. I think for the most part, since the beginning, they've gotten it right. They've done well in identifying contributors, not just designated players either, but like a Perez, an Escobar, you know what I mean? Like, they're good, I think they're good at evaluating and identifying talent, and I expect them to do that again. Like I said, like, yeah, this roster is not complete, especially for our goals this season, supposedly. And so, yeah, you know, I just, I expect to see more. You yeah, know, we've got about a month. We are literally four weeks away from uh, that match in Honduras. Yeah, and so they've got, a, I think, a couple of weeks to get some players in, get them uh, trained up, embedded with the team, and yeah, let's just hit the ground running, man. Right, and to go along with your uh, your your um, you know what you're saying about the the front office and that they've shown time after time to be able to uh, yeah more generally you know make a hit than a miss. Uh, especially, yeah, Julian Russell, who was the number eight in the Super Draft, and in terms of you know Super Draft picks, it has been very thin in terms of the actual MLS talent uh, lately. Yeah. But for them to hit on both Miles Robinson and Julian Russell exactly. in that same draft uh, in the 2017 uh, season is, yeah, I think a testament to, I think the talent in recruitment. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, until they prove us. Uh, just terribly, terribly wrong. Right. We'll put the backing with the front office until they do. Now you mentioned uh, Miles Robinson. Of course, Miles got his raise right at the end of the season. Right. And uh, we learned about the Emerson Hyman deal, and Emerson Hyman is going to be on about reportedly about eight hundred thousand this season. It rises to a million by twenty twenty two. That's a lot, <laughs> you know. Like, it is. It's taking up a lot of room, and I with the, um, at that price, I expect Hyman to re to feature regularly. But mm -hmm. then it's a case of so were those moves made? Did that? Yeah. Did Julian Gressel see that? And yeah. Was he maybe a little bit perturbed? It's probably maybe saw the Miles Robinson at least. Yeah. And saw a oh, guy from the same draft. I've been playing longer than he has. Right. Uh, so maybe yeah, he was a little bit justified in some of the respects, but and then but did the club prioritize Gressel like mm -hmm. they said? I mean, in terms of actions, I'm not sure that they did. But you know, again, but we're, hey, we're gonna back the front office until they prove us wrong. Absolutely. I mean, but you know, by all means, it doesn't mean that they're absolved of any wrongdoing if no. they do not, uh, you know, hit on some of these because it is. This is the, the business that they're in, in that, yeah, you have to produce results because that's what they've set forth. They've set forth that ambition of wanting to win the biggest trophies possible. You know, Darren Eels did mention it at the kit reveal in 2019. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're going by their word. And, you know, I think even Brad Guzan was uh, upset at the, uh, the goalpost being moved and the, uh, you know, they failed to meet their goals in terms of what they set forth in mm -hmm. the 2019 season. So I think uh, it's warranted and, you know, we uh, will move forth. But um, yeah, I mean, it's sad to see Gressel go, but we yeah. wish him the best. So anyway, uh, it, yeah, was uh, <laughs> a, another player that came in and that was Adam John uh, today. And I even tweeted out that yeah, maybe there was some good with the bad. Maybe this wasn't the exact idea that uh, I uh, usually expect from uh, LA United. Right. In terms of like, yeah, they usually try to announce uh, something maybe not as savory for the fans mm -hmm. with something, uh, you know, maybe just as good or, but this yeah. one maybe kind of underwhelms some of the fans. Sure. But they it really is... don't have anything to do with each other, though. Right. But uh, yeah. 
He's yeah. a forward from Phoenix Rising, the USL side. He uh, had previously played for Columbus Crew and San Jose Earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, he was infamously the guy who shushed us during that penalty shootout mm -hmm. uh, that Columbus Crew won. Right. So, uh, yeah. You know, you know, maybe he's got some edge, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. maybe Yeah, you can applaud that edge to him right. in that uh, he was icy cool in front of goal. So right. maybe if he is that and still can continue that, great. Yeah. Do that in the Five Stripes uniform. Right. But yeah, yeah I think he's coming here to primarily be a backup. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of MLS numbers, uh, 12 goals and two assists in 103 appearances. Now he is coming off his most prolific season with the Phoenix Rising. He helped them win a championship. He was uh, all USL first team, 17 goals, five assists. I know it's USL, but it's this. Like if you're looking for a backup striker, it's gonna be difficult to find a starting caliber player because they're gonna wanna start. Exactly, and they know if they're gonna come to LA United that Jose Martinez is gonna play the majority of the games, yeah. and so they're not gonna see a ton of MLS minutes. Right. And so you kind of get this kind of, in baseball terms, kind of a quad A type player where you know they're too good for triple A or the the minors, if you will, in uh, USL, and right. then you know they're maybe not quite that level of MLS, mm -hmm. and so, I think he's good depth. He's a target four type of guy. He's six, six three. three. Yeah. yeah. So he's a guy that uh, definitely has bags of experience as well. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, if in a pinch uh, we need to bring him on, I wouldn't be too worried. If uh, in a two as well, it would work well with the Jose Martinez, and it kind of fits Frank De Boer's uh, type of kind of you know a striker that can hold it up as well. So yeah, it's definitely uh, someone that I think uh, you know can help us. I don't think he's a key piece, but he is a guy that uh, is brought in to kind of round out the squad. Yep. Uh, also, kind of maybe to make way in that deal mm -hmm. is Lagos Kunga is going to go on loan to Phoenix Rising for the 2020 season. Yep. There was the reported that uh, it was going to be a $100,000 transfer fee for Adam John uh, for uh, you know his services and you know for the transfer, but is. That actually, you know, the difference in that uh, why a specific kind of number wasn't actually relayed. Mm -hmm. Also, LA United don't really announce a ton of their transfer fees to begin with. Yeah, and most MLS teams don't. Yeah, yeah. so it's just, uh, it's how it goes. It's so, interesting for him, I think. Yeah, the playing time and then playing for a successful team, you know, it'll be interesting. It should be valuable experience, if anything. Yeah, Lagos Kunga definitely gets, uh, you know, another opportunity with the USL squad that, uh, yeah, he, you know, did pretty well for Memphis 901. Uh, Phoenix Rising is definitely a step up in terms of quality and in terms of definitely uh, maybe the competition for places. And so, right. uh, yeah, he gets an opportunity and hopefully he can take it, come back and uh, kick on for us. Because I, I feel like, yeah, definitely uh, Kunga is a guy that has some talent uh, that can play for us. And it's just a matter of uh, yeah, getting that playing time to show up. So hopefully it does. Yeah. But uh, also another homegrown in Andrew Carlton yes. is uh, going and is confirmed to go on loan with uh, Indy 11 per Carlos Bocanegra. We had spoken about it last week, but uh, yeah. now it is pretty much confirmed. It's just a matter of it being official. I think maybe there's some details to be worked out in the deal, but yeah. uh, it hasn't been announced quite yet. But he will go on, uh, yeah, for the full 2020 season mm -hmm. uh, on loan. Yeah, so. no, another good move, I think, for similar reasons. Right. And so, yeah, we talked about it last week, so we don't yeah. have to go talk about it in this one. And so exactly four weeks from today, we will be playing our first Champions League match. And we've kind of uh, transferred out a lot of elite players in yeah. terms of Don Denagri, Julian Gressel, LGP. Uh, some key cogs in our squad, and so far what we brought in is a Fernando Mesa mm -hmm. and uh, some other guys that maybe don't quite fit the bill of, uh, you know, replacements for the guys that we sent out. Yeah. So, yeah, if this is how we're trying to win Champions League, uh, I mean, it might be a little bit left to be desired in terms of uh, the confidence that we have. So I think LA United are making... Uh, more moves. They have prioritized a center, central midfielder. Yes. But uh, yeah, I mean, as is, and four weeks out, yeah, there's a lot of work to do. And so it, uh, yeah. 
I think so, especially, yeah, if that's our goals, if we want, if Champions League or supporters should, I personally think that we should be trying to be one of the best teams in the league during the regular season, not just, you know, waiting for the playoffs. But, you know, if we make a Champions League run, that's a different story as well. Point is, like, we should be one of the best teams in the league. Right. And, yeah, with this roster, can we do that? Mm, probably not. Again, though, like, yes, the, we have four weeks. I think there is enough time to get one or two, I think, elite or, you know, hot, talented players in. Because I think right. that's what we're missing uh, beyond just, like, depth at certain positions, which, yes, we do need to address. But also, we need difference makers if we're going to win multiple trophies this season. Right. And, yeah, because if you look at it in terms of one through three, you know, designated players, uh, yes, like, we have quite elite players there. It's the four through 11 that we need to fill out in terms of the starting 11 that need to be at the required level or greater than what we, you know, put out. So, yes. yep. um, <clears throat> yeah, but the team has been uh, in preseason and they have gone on to Bradenton, Florida uh, to get ready for a kind of trio of match uh, or preseason matches uh, in the upcoming kind of end of the month. And so it will be exciting days because we will be able to see uh, some of the, you know, kind of at least some of the alerts and stuff of them playing. <laughs> right, yeah. The Actual video <laughs> to be announced. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, at least the known one and in terms of all the uh, on sale and, you know, uh, type of preseason matches, the one that we can go to is Birmingham Legion on February 8th and that has gone on sale today. Uh, that is January 21st. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you haven't, go Google it or you can check out in our description box below for uh, the ability to get to those, uh, to that match and get those tickets. But uh, yeah, also uh, in terms of match days, LA United, in terms of season ticket holders, they've now uh, kind of just uh, did away with the match day cards and now are moving it to mobile only for the app. So you must have the app in order to get in. Do you find this good or problematic? You weren't, a, unfortunately, a uh, ticket right. holder, but it, yeah. So you've been kind of accustomed to this a little bit. As well. Yeah, right. Using the app. Yeah, I mean, and the pre they updated the app, and the app is a lot better. I have to say. So thank you. You would for, hope. Yeah, right. I know, right. They moved everything to the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then making a whole deal about it, right? Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully the app is smoother. The one thing I worry about that is like all of those people trying to download the ticket at the same time. I would recommend like if you can, uh, yeah. Do it right way before the line. Yeah, exactly. If you find a way to, yeah, where your connection won't be compromised or anything, that uh, that would be my only concern, yeah. I would think. But uh, There was an FAQ in the email that they sent out to season ticket holders. And it explained why uh, they were doing this in terms of, you know, people passing on the uh, lanyards and whatnot, the match day cards rather, and, uh, you know, the kind of screenshot stuff will no longer work as well. Right. They just kind of wanted to uh, lessen the kind of counterfeiting or slash uh, ways of getting around uh, certain things that are in place. Right. I get that. The other problems that may arise though, some people don't uh, have smartphones, uh, some of the older folk or right. even younger folk that are just steadfast in being <laughs> <laughs> yeah. against the system. Right, you're right. Uh, Which kudos to you, honestly. Yeah, kudos to you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and so there are certain other ways where, yeah, you can just go to the gate. But, uh, you know, I imagine what about getting in lines, uh, you know, in terms of back to your section? That might be a problem. Mm. You know, the supporter section notoriously kind of, uh, kind of fend for yourself. Will it be kind of a shit show? Who knows? Yeah. So hopefully, uh, yeah. I, you would think the club has thought through all of this right. and are prepared for this. So Let's hopefully, uh, yeah, they have you know maybe <clears throat> even more people working uh, the lines and whatnot. So mm -hmm. that, you know you're in and out. It's not a big deal. But you know if you have a handful of concessions and then you're trying to pull up an app what if your phone dies the battery dies all sure. that yeah like yeah. uh it could be just a, you know a huge amount of problems that could arise right. we shall see but uh you know it maybe is not uh people weren't thrilled that it was the one-two punch of julian gressel and matched <laughs> no longer right i understand right but uh right. yeah it's uh you know yeah it can't all be rosy news every single time with Ellie Yudded yep. or any club. anybody yeah exactly yeah. but anyway so 
Uh, also, moving on from that, yeah, Atlanta United and the Motagua game will not be based in Tegush Tegushigalpa uh, National Stadium. That's pretty good. Decent. Uh, <laughs> as it was previously thought, yeah. it will be at the San Pedro Sula Olympic Stadium now, uh, kind of moving it uh, kind of further town. Yeah. Uh, if I read correctly, the uh, San Pedro Sula is further north, I think. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's less traveled. Yeah. yeah. Either way, I don't think a lot of uh, a lot of five star fans are going to make the trek. Yeah. Uh, it has been a notoriously kind of dangerous uh, area in terms of the uh, just the kind of match day experience for some people yeah. apparently. So uh, you know, it may not affect the fans too hard, but at least it gets um, you know the team to a place that is kind of renovated. Uh, I think properly, and, mm -hmm. which is the reason why they switched it to begin yeah. with. But uh, in terms of uh, some sunnier things, <laughs> Joseph Martinez spoke with ESPN FC recently, mm -hmm. uh, kind of on the media day uh, type of thing for MLS, and also, uh, yeah, you know, spoke with uh, you know, uh, kind of Ali Moreno, who right. loves Joseph Martinez, right? Because Ali's Venezuelan, if you didn't yeah. know. He, he loves his Bamos Venezuela yeah. uh, chance. But uh, he was asked if his goal or Zlatan's goal was better. And, and he said, my goal 100%. Yeah. And then he was asked, you know, if he was better than Zlatan. And he's like, in my opinion, I'm the best, man. And you expect nothing less from the bravado that is Joseph Martinez. No arguments from us. Definitely not. And uh, I mean, yeah, with Slaton gone, it's now, yeah, Joseph's show in terms of, uh, you know, that bravado and yeah. showing uh, that kind of uh, just utter confidence in yeah. oneself. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah I mean, there is Vela still there, but I think Vela's a little bit of a different character, though. Right. So Joseph definitely, he's a quote machine <laughs> as is Zlatan, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. You know, even before the uh, or the first day that he was able to speak to the media, he was like, "I was getting bored at you know, at home." Uh, <laughs> he said it was nice to be back because, yeah, I mean, just um, you know, it's. He said ultimately, uh, like, who leaves isn't important; it's about who arrives. Now I said that before, of course, this news went down. So sure. hopefully, uh, he remembers that. It, I mean, yes, to a degree, but he's right. He's right. You know, it's. We'll remember those players, of course, and they'll always be in our hearts, but the most important thing is that we get adequate replacements. Right, so I feel you, Joseph, and yeah, good thing he didn't comment on uh, Julian Russell's uh, contract as well. He's That's why he didn't. Yeah, maybe he knew something, <laughs> who knows, but either yeah. way. Uh, so another, uh, with the, the updates on Arzamendia and Diasanti, the Cerro Porteño pair, is that, uh, yeah, they uh, kind of, their agent, anyway was uh kind of pretty much speaking that yeah they uh you know are they still have interest from mls clubs but that there still isn't a deal in place he did say that his team uh as in the agent would get working on it this week and it's interesting timing for that comment considering this news has just gone down right. and i think if you're freeing up that much allocation money it should be for a couple players so it could be, but uh, yeah, I mean, they will be slightly an expensive pair in that respect and hopefully, but you know, there's still, Carlos Bocanegra has said that he's operating on the old CBA. And so with that, does it really leave room for some players that are gonna be on a high transfer? It's field? that, yeah, it's that so. comment. And then Bocanegra also said that he's okay with the midfield as it is. We have some versatile pieces. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, like, yes, we do have some versatile pieces, and I think if we add one more starting caliber midfielder, mm -hmm. then actually, yeah, we would have a nice midfield in terms of versatility, in terms of depth. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, I'm not satisfied with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I still feel like, yeah, we need someone to, to you know, do what Darlington Navi can do. Uh, and so it might be an Ezekiel Barco that has to drop a little bit deeper to, uh, kind of hold our possession a little bit more yeah. and then that might require P.T. Martinez to go forward more and stay up a little bit higher um, and it will require P.T. Martinez to give that final ball a lot more mm -hmm. so it will be key that he gets into those positions and can provide the assist to Joseph Martinez and whomever is uh, to score and score himself because Julian Gressel yeah is now 
out of the squad. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's going to be quite key in terms of that midfield. But, um, yeah, so moving on from that, there seems to be a new Atlanta United sleeve sponsor in Piedmont Healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a leaked photo with Tito Pichalba, I believe, doing like a video uh, with the, the team. And someone took a photo. It got leaked. As things leak with the Argentine, Argentines and the Paraguayans, <laughs> just like it's crazy. Like, uh, uh, you know, let us know if you if you like it uh, in the comments below. But you know, I don't think it's too intrusive. It does kind of have a, as uh, someone noted in uh, one of the comments uh, on our page, that it kind of has a feel of a captain's armband. And, you know, and, uh, I could see that, but uh, it's not the most intrusive. It's kind of the same gold as the, uh, you know, as the LA United colors. So mm -hmm. not uh, not the worst and it gives us more money. So if it gives us more money, that's theoretically we should get more players. Yeah, right? that's or, the name of the game. At least, you know, that's what I think. Higher transfer fees maybe. Right, that right, is, right. That's what it means, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, let us know what you guys think of the sleeve, sleeve sponsor in the comments below. But yeah. Um, yeah, moving on from that, Brooks Lennon is confirmed to be number 11 in a Paulo Neto uh, IG story. Uh, people, I'm a little weak. Yep, people leak things all over the place. And, you know, <laughs> Thank I, you. I'm I a guess. sleuth, pretty right. much. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so uh, he takes over Eric Rometty's number, and of course, Eric Rometty took over number five. Right. Um, and yeah, we don't still don't know Fernando Mesa's number quite yet. Uh, I try to make it out through Paolo Neto's video, but it was extremely blurry, so I couldn't confirm which number it was. Right. But um, yeah, you know, I think uh, it's interesting because yeah, he finally gets, uh, you know, in terms of Eric Rometty, he gets the number that he's played with uh, at Banfield before, also it was tattooed on him. Okay. But Brooks Lennon gets a winger number, which is kind of more traditional in terms of if you're a, a purist. Yeah, and I think yeah, Rometty also, yeah, it's a more traditional number for him too. Yeah, a little the bit. Beery, yeah. Yeah, closer to anyway, I guess. Right. Because he's definitely not a winger. But no. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so someone that might uh, play uh, wing back, and we sorry we kind of meandered a little bit on this, but uh, we didn't get to speak on it on the last show. It was Edgar Castillo yep. has been signed officially. Uh, so it was both Edgar Castillo and Adam John uh, seemed like to be on trial within the United, and they have both been signed. Yep. Uh, he's a 13 year old, uh, 13 year professional rather, and a two time champion of Liga Emekis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he brings bags of experience. Um, attacking style. Right, attacking style. Has previously played for New England Revolution mm -hmm. uh, and a host of Liga Emekis clubs. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, in terms of depth, yeah, like I mentioned before, I think uh, he's probably replacing Brett Shea. I think that it's like he's probably our. Backup or backup, backup, left back. Right. I, I wouldn't count on him for too many starts. Yeah. Uh, if it is, I would be a little bit worried. Exactly. Um, but yeah, he definitely brings that experience for a George Bellow as well in terms of uh, probably, you know, he'll start maybe some Champions League matches because he's accustomed to it. Yeah. It might not be, uh, you know, in terms of Bellow, it's, yeah, you saw that it was maybe a little bit too early last season right. for him, too big of a stage. Uh, yeah, it'll be good for him to uh, get the starts there. George Bellow in MLS, and hopefully there's another left back, left wing back that is brought in. Maybe who knows? Uh, it would definitely bring some really healthy competition for places mm -hmm. if Harzamendi was brought in. But anyway, so uh, yeah, in terms of an academy player, uh, speaking of George Bellow, yeah. there is a 15-year-old academy player, Efren Morales, who he is on trial with Manchester United yeah. uh, for their academy. And that's very huge in terms of, yeah, not only the level of the club that he's trialing at, yeah. but uh, in terms of, well, okay, trial maybe is uh, not the term for it, but essentially he's giving, he's getting a look. He's getting a look, yeah. Uh, the Red Devils. That's yeah. not a bad club to, uh, you know, potentially get a run in. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so if he does well, you know, that'd be fantastic. But either way, I mean, that's, huge for the LA United Academy that they're getting looks like this. Yeah, exactly. Very interesting too, especially from a Manchester United perspective, kind of, you know, it's, uh, 
Tanner should be, uh, yeah, really, he's, yeah. he's probably thrilled that, uh, you know, the two clubs are uh, kind of linked in this respect. Yeah, but. it's. I mean, yeah, I'm just surprised that a, a club of that level is looking at an MLS player, especially that young, but it kind of goes to show you. I mean, like, American players, too, have been making the jump to Europe a little bit younger, and so maybe that's uh, Man U doing their due diligence, yeah. but uh, maybe they see something in him. I hope right. they do. Yeah, I mean, and if you've seen photos of this guy, he's like a man-child. Uh, <laughs> he's like 6'3", and while the rest of the other guys are, uh, and he's a midfielder, and so yeah. yeah, the other guys at his age are yeah definitely a lot smaller than he is. Right. And in terms of any of those photos he's in, it's like wow. Right. Um, so yeah, I think that partially probably catches the eye as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, LA United also announced that three of the club's U19 academy. Uh, players will have a two-week training stint at Aberdeen, our kind of sister club right. now at this, at this point. point yeah. uh, Jordan Matthews, Marzuk Puckerin, and Garrison Tubbs. Uh, they will be joining the Scottish club from January 18th through February 1st. Yeah. So good on those players. Uh, yeah, some center back and goalkeeper material. And so I think good on them. They, uh, yeah, hopefully get a good stint with them. Maybe they get caught on and, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, kind of playing for their academy. Okay. Yeah, it, it also seems like another uh, example or reflection of our relationship with Aberdeen. And yeah, it's very interesting. I, th I think it's great that, uh, yeah, there are going to be players who maybe have a pathway into Europe. And, you know, like I said before, SPL is not the highest level league, but it's a start. And mm -hmm. players do move from SPL to EPL and other, you know, mm -hmm. comparable leagues, I would say. But, right. But it's yeah. the gateway to uh, yeah the European leagues and, and whatnot. That yeah. uh, it's a stepping stone. So yeah, yeah it, it could be a, a really you know enlightening move, and that could be really good. We wish them all the best in uh, the training stints. But Absolutely. that does it for the news. It was a lot this week, but uh, that gets us to our buy or sell segment. And simply, we put up an Atlanta United topic and say if we buy or sell and give our reasons why. So first topic is, we'll be fine with Escobar, Lennon, and to a degree, Walks as our right back, right wing back options in 2020, buy or sell. I'm gonna buy that, actually. And so, you know, I'll start with the uh, right wing back specifically. We have seen Escobar play that position and do it damn well. He did it in the 2018 postseason. Um, I think, yeah, and if we were talking about right back, especially in the setups that we've talked about, you know, previously, yeah, yeah I think uh, Escobar is a more natural fit for that. And then the, the depth, Lennon has decent numbers. We, you know, we'll see what kind of return we get for him. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a case of he's able to do that role well enough to, he doesn't get as many assists, but he gets enough that it's, uh, you don't feel the blow of losing Russell as much. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's reasonable depth for that position. Yeah. Um, I, I tentatively buy. Uh, because I, I think it's, yeah, Escobar is, I think, uh, you know, I think really good for right wing back or even, uh, right center back or right back, um, yeah, in this league for sure. And so... Uh, he alone kind of <clears throat> is keeping this uh, definitely uh, in a very strong position. Mm -hmm. Brooks Lennon, I think as a wing back or a right winger or a right midfielder, uh, definitely brings a lot. As a right back, he maybe is kind of out of position a sure. little bit, but uh, that's still a very strong uh, depth piece, if not a starter. Uh, and then you have Anton Wax, who was a starter previously for us and can deputize there as well as various other positions. And so, yeah, we are deep. Uh, are we maybe as elite as, you know, Julian Russell was in terms of his uh, service from the right? Maybe not. And so I think we'll be fine. Maybe we won't be as good, maybe in some respects, but mm -hmm. it definitely is way more kind of depth than we had in previous years at the right back position. Yeah, at exactly. Right wing. So, yeah, yeah we'll take it. Uh, and to a degree, Tito Vishalba has played at wing back at times. So anyway, yeah. but um, so he could, put, could play on either side. Anyway, right. so alternately on the other side, we'll be fine with Bello and Castillo as our left back, left wing back options in 2020 by ourselves. Yeah, that's a hard sell for me. I uh, you got the 30 was it 33? 33. 33 year old Edgar Castillo. You've got just about to turn 18. George Bello, and so, uh, yeah, I think we need it in between. I think we just need to play a starting caliber player, and also I think left back is a position where we can add uh, an elite talent, an elite player, and I think 
I think DeBoer wants his fullbacks to contribute more. You know, like get up the field, overlap, maybe provide help in midfield as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'd like us to see... I like to see us uh, get a near elite player for that position. I just don't think Bello and Castillo is enough. I don't want to put that much pressure on Bello. And Castillo at this stage in his career should not be a regular starter in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I, I firmly sell as well. It is a uh, kind of spinal tap drummer position for us in that, yeah, we've been quite deep sometimes in terms of how many players. Uh, just last season. Yeah, and then, pff, damn, they, <laughs> that depth just completely goes out the window. Right. And so. Having just two players, I mean, especially with what you were saying just uh, recently and just earlier, that yeah, you know, you have a fairly inexperienced and then a kind of maybe uh, nearing the end of his career type of guy. You need a guy probably that's uh, a little bit in his prime if we're really trying to, uh, really trying to go for CCL and you know some of the top, uh, you know, the top honors in this league. It's it will be very difficult if that's our depth. And so, yes, we will need to bring in more depth and talent, I feel like, for sure, uh, at this position. So, anyway, that does it for buy or sell and gets us to the mailbag. You guys send in these questions through IG Story. Please continue to do so. We might answer your question in the future. And you guys send a lot of these, so we'll try to go through as many as possible because it's the off season, so why the hell not? Right. So, uh, first question comes from Elogical11. Thoughts on FO and what the Gressel deal signifies to you? What it most signifies to me is that the front office is doing its best to back the manager. And I, now I know Nagby wanted to leave and we knew that kind of from the beginning of last season, but Perez, uh, it was, yeah, he looked unsettled, I think, for most of last season. Uh, it came out that uh, there were times that DeBoer and LGP didn't see eye to eye. So even though like they were both professional about it, I think... Yeah, I think it's probably best that he moves on and LGP gets a raise anyway. Gressel, uh, does he fit the setup that DeBoer wants to do? You know, what does DeBoer want to do? I think he wants to do the 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1, you know, and so it's a case of, is Gressel the best fit for that? And then, yeah, in terms, you know, Gressel did say, and his agent did say a lot, you know, maybe, maybe that contributed to it as well. I don't tend to buy into that too much, but I think what it shows is that the, the best teams in the world, back their manager, right? The front office, the players, the coach are in lockstep. And I think that there's no other way we can get back to the top of the league. And so in a, to a degree, those moves have to be done. So uh, like I said, I, they, we need to bring in more players for sure. But I think the front office has got Frank the boys back. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting because yeah, the thoughts <laughs> on the front office is that, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there maybe are some lessons and maybe some transparency in terms of uh, what's being said out there. Like Carlos Bonegra has said that, okay, Julian Gressel is a priority and then he sells him intra MLS to DC United. Uh, that maybe doesn't show the fans that uh, he is a priority and nor does it for Julian Gressel, of course, but uh, maybe he did do right by Julian Gressel in giving him uh, the raise and, you know, uh, keeping him in MLS, as I said earlier, yeah. uh, there is the kind of speak on basically that he did ask for a trade apparently, or that, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, kind of contract offers that were made, that there were, uh, maybe there's kind of disputes on yeah. that, who knows, but then there's the LGP thing where, uh, you know, FDB said that uh, LGP l was looking for kind of greener pastures or a different uh, experience. Right. And uh, that's, yeah, like uh, Bokenegger said that LGP wasn't looking to be traded didn't ask for a trade, or LGP also said he didn't ask for a trade. So right. it's, it's very interesting in terms of what the he said, she said is at the moment. Right. In terms of the Gressel deal and what it signifies, I feel like, yeah, it definitely is a changing of the guard. Uh, there is, uh, there was that feeling, of course, uh, in the off season that, yeah, there were these kind of stalwarts in the team that uh, could be moved on, a Tito Vishalba even as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, this is definitely, you know, I think not only Carlos Bocanegra and FDB kind of, I think, working together to, uh, you know, make the best moves possible for Atlanta United, but also within the MLS kind of salary structure. And that's the difficulty is mm -hmm. uh, just the CBA, while we were sure maybe uh, waiting on the CBA or whichever for Gressel, if it were, it still is, I think, at the end of the day, um, you know, they had to operate with this old 
uh, you know, CBA deal because it hadn't been done. Right. So, and to be fair, I mean, league activity has been busy. So it's not. I think mm -hmm. teams. I, I think teams have a good idea of what the CBA will probably be. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think they're just looking forward, looking at, looking out for the future of the club in terms of uh, sh salary structure, you know, the manager, all of that. It's, it's complicated. Right. Next question comes from Bryant Olivas uh, or Bryant Olivas. <laughs> Should we be panicking a little? I'll let you answer that one first. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think we shouldn't be panicking per se, but I think there is reason to worry that we're not bringing in the um, kind of like for like or better uh, replacements for the players that we've lost. And so, yeah, there is the, the worry. And of course, uh, you know, anytime you move on fan favorites, there will be some backlash. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you quell that with kind of bringing in the confident, uh, you know, moves that uh, really kind of quell any of the fears for the fan base. And unfortunately, Quite yet, we haven't done that. Uh, right. Fernando Mesa might be quite talented, but uh, is he, you know, at, he's older than LGP? Will he have the same impact? Maybe right. not. And so, you know, and then in terms of that, we haven't brought in, uh, you know, anybody that can replicate quite yet what Dante Nagby does. Right. Um, and that seems that's probably going to be the most difficult thing. I don't think we're going to be able yeah. to do that. Yeah, exactly. Like, you worry about the spine, and that's. You know, a big part of that is mm -hmm. connecting the lines in midfield, and yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to really bring someone in that can do the job. Yes. So, what about you? Um, Should we be panicking? A little yeah. Bit? Listen, don't let me tell you how to feel. Like, if you, I, and I think there's good reasons to to be worried. I mean, have the front office, I think, done enough to get this team in position to win multiple trophies? No, but uh, there's still time, so I'm not panicking yet. But uh, yeah, if this roster doesn't change much between now and four weeks from now, I'd be pretty panicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Keaton Thomas 61 asks, with Gressel being traded to DC, what does this move do to help us in the long run? Yeah, I think it uh, helps us with the salary structure. Most of you know, I think the front office was just nervous about committing to Gressel, committing that much money to Gressel for multiple years, and uh, and his role in the team maybe not staying the same. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, it, what it does, it frees up, it frees Atlanta United up to do other moves. The most important, that's the biggest thing to me. Right. That, yeah, we have a lot of allocation money that we can use now. And so it's really about LA United using it and using it wisely. Uh, in, in which case, yeah, like there have been instances all over sports where you might overpay for a player that has been performing, but, you know, maybe... It just doesn't quite work out when you give them that big contract. And so, uh, and unfortunately in MLS, it is a salary cap structure. And so you can't really reward the guys. Um, and I think it would have been probably more wise if we had done that in the first season where we uh, give him a raise, but you can't do that really per se in MLS. Yeah. And it's just the difficulty. Yeah, so. it's unfortunate. So right. uh, next, next question. question. Yeah, comes from William P. 1928, given Frank Given Frank's Ajax experience, what a X sounds, uh, does it make sense to sell Gressel to better fit 4-3-3 formation? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because the like Gressel as a winger in a 4-3-3, I don't know if that works. I think you want your wingers in that setup to cut in, but most importantly, take players on. And that's not what Gressel does. You know, like Gressel wants to stay wide. He needs room and he, he can deliver a great cross, a great through ball from the right. But I think he operates best in space. I don't, I think that uh, what we would want a player in that position to do is take players on, like a Tito. You yeah. Know? Like I think Tito is actually a more appropriate uh, player for those positions. Right, but unfortunately he wasn't uh, healthy slash, uh, you know, producing at the pace of a Julian Russell. Yeah. Uh, and I think you said it best in that he best operates in space. Uh, yeah, he at times have taken on players on the wing, but I think ultimately, at his best, he's uh, you know dropping in a ball from deep to Jose Martinez yeah. because he had the space to operate. Right. Or making a late run on the right when the ball's been on the left. He scored exactly. some goals from that position as well. So. Right, yeah. That third man run from Julian Gressel, yeah, has been very, very useful. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, he definitely could have fit, but, um, you know, I think... 
it's just ultimately at the end of the day, he's, I think, best as a right wing back. Yeah. So it's really, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I think, like, the part, big part of the reason why DeBoer even used the three at the back last season is because, like, yeah, most of the players were comfortable with it, they got the best out of that roster, especially Gressel. Right. But what we're seeing now is a lot of turnover. So. Right. It's uh, it's definitely going to bring some change into how we play as well. So, yeah. uh, next question comes from Is Laura fourteen and Ryan Beatty as well. They had a pretty similar question. Do we have the squad to win CCL? As of today, no. Plain and simple. Like, yeah, because like if if we get past Montago, we'd have to play Scoob, uh, yeah, face Club America in the next round. We're, if they get through as well. If they get through, which they should, right? Yeah. But yeah, if if that's the matchup. Uh, as of right now, we're not good enough to beat Club America, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Uh, can we beat Montago with this squad? Probably, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, to ultimately win the whole thing, it's maybe a bit difficult because, I, I don't, yeah, we, we lack the depth, I think, at uh, some key positions and also in terms of control in midfield. Mm -hmm. We don't have it at the moment, I feel like. Uh, you know, we have some guys that can maybe replicate a few things, but right. just on the whole, it's just not uh, what's required. And yeah, I mean, I think we have, again, like I've said, some work to do. Yes, absolutely. All right, so our next question comes from Ryan Beatty again. How long until MLS eliminates the salary cap? Is the current cap holding the league back? Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to eliminate the salary cap anytime soon. Unfortunately. But in terms of uh, the salary cap structure, it's kind of, again, um, you know, if you're new to kind of the MLS kind of setup, it basically is to uh, keep parity intact and so that any team could potentially win it or mm -hmm. win trophies. Uh, and so in terms of that, uh, it kind of also keeps kind of the freewheeling spending from getting out of hand, yeah. kind of like the other leagues of yesteryear that have failed because of kind of a uh, lack of foresight, but... I mean, even MLS teams in the past have folded. You know? Yeah. We've, we're, we're removed from that now, but it has happened. Right, but it is uh, still, you know, yeah, we are <clears throat> further along into uh, kind of the MLS years that there are some real big hindrances mm -hmm. in terms of uh, roster construction. TAM has been a big part of that and also a kind of big frustration for a lot of people. For a lot of, I mean, look at NYCSC uh, last season, right? With Don Torrance. I mean, they got Air Bear in eventually, but he was frustrated because the first two months of the season, he had to operate without a striker. And there's speculation that's part of the reason why he left. You know, Don Torrance is not a small name. And so in terms of holding the league back, that I think that is an example of the league being held back. Right, and so, yeah, it definitely is to a respect where, I mean, uh, is, is it holding the league back? Um, to a slight degree. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh, you know, I would say completely that it's something that it needs to be done away with quite yet. Right. Soon though, uh, yeah, maybe. But no. uh, there's just a lot of things that, uh, if they're bringing in kind of the young DP thing where you have to be uh, 23 years or younger, right? that will be a hindrance. So, and yeah, like, but, if you want the league's thinking on this, they're, when they want to hinder the designated player even more. So, yeah. that's, I think, is ill-advised, but we'll see. Yeah, because what happens when you, you know, turn 24, yeah. or, yeah, it's just... We would be in a spot of bother, actually, especially if what? Barco left. Like, we would have to... Yeah, I mean, and uh, Joseph as well. And, yeah, I mean, you right. know, the, the TAM money is... Yeah, it, it just gets into a complicated uh, mess where, uh, yeah, we just, uh, you know, I think simplifying it, uh, I think, is the better way and not making it too um, too difficult for casual fans even to just, you know, catch on. Because yeah. there are a lot of people that are also Euro fans as well, and there are a lot of people that uh, enjoy MLS uh, salary cap structures, I think there's a, a common place that we can find. Sure. Uh, next question comes from JPED L. Huber. Is this the low point of the offseason? I hope so, because then that means we're bringing in players. I, uh, yeah, I <laughs> I think so. I, I don't think the front office is done. Yeah, I don't think the front office is uh, going to move any more stalwarts of the team, probably. Tito Michalba is technically is a stalwart of the team, but uh, he has kind of been on the periphery, unfortunately, in the last two seasons. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of low point, probably, I mean, I can't foresee uh, 
this transfer window any point, uh, kind of moving on a DP. So, right. uh, you know, if uh, it's in the summer, that's a whole different story. Sure. Next question comes from the Alex Novak. Would you want Chicharito to come to the club if he didn't go to LA? In my opinion, I would want him. Would I want him? Yeah. I mean... For Atlanta United. Yeah, for Atlanta United, uh, there's just... Is there room for Chicharito and Joseph? I think it's the only issue. And not, not in terms of, like, financial structure, because we know no. But, um, yeah, is there room for both of those personalities? Because that's the thing. Like, I feel like... Uh, Chicharito, I mean, he's a Mexican international, he's been at Man U, he's been in Spain, and so for him to come back to North America is is a big deal, and uh, yeah, he's gonna, it's, it's a different effect to, to Zlatan, right, but uh, so I think especially, yeah, him going to California is really a smart move for them. Um, I think it would have a similar effect here as well, you know, uh, especially with the uh, Hispanic population here in Atlanta, but again, I don't know. I think it's difficult to see both of those personalities on the same team. Yeah, so. and uh, I think not only personalities, but also their skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, not the most similar, but there are some similarities in some respects. Yeah. Uh, they both, I mean, Chicharito is kind of the ultimate poacher. Yes. Uh, Jose Martinez has some poaching abilities as well. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if they're both in the squad, yeah, you need kind of a little bit more balance. And so, you know, in terms of if they're both in the starting 11, I don't think that works. Right. Um, yeah, just in any way, I feel like it doesn't work if Joseph Martinez is on the squad. Yeah. So, yeah, Chicharito, I wouldn't want on LA United. <laughs> uh, so, last question comes from Luke Say. With Gressel done, do you think we will still play with a back three? Uh, to a degree. I don't think that we will start games in the back three as much. I don't think you'll see the same, uh, what was it, Escobar, Miles, and... I guess LGP or Pogba at times. I don't think you'll see that kind of setup. I think what you'll see is we start off in a 4-3-3 and then one of the midfielders, hopefully like a Viasanti, if he does arrive, he's that type of midfielder that drops, you know, between the center backs. And maybe when we have the ball, then it looks like a three at the back. But I don't think it'll be a pure three at the back. I think if anything, we'll be a versatile team, uh, we'll be a flexible team, a lot like what we saw in the postseason. Mm. Uh, yeah, and if you know, in what you're talking about, Eric Rometty, it maybe is the guy who drops in sure. the center backs, possibly as well. Uh, no, I think we uh, we still have the capabilities of playing with the back three uh, because Franco Escobar has that flexibility of being able to play at a very high level in terms of being a center back and a right wing back and a right back, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, there are the possibilities that we can do that still, and a Brooks Lennon you know, really can uh, kind of at least, you know, replicate at least the kind of trickiness um, mm -hmm. that we need, not replicate, but at least provide some uh, trickiness that we need on the, the right side. And, you know, hopefully his end product does improve. But, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, we will see what type of formation that uh, Frank DeBoer does like to play. But yeah, I mean, he is a Dutch manager and, you know, angling, I think it would probably be more 4-3-3 because he is a disciple of uh, that whole setup. So, yeah. Um, okay, actually, I lied. Last question. <laughs> Justin HLE uh, asks, possible Tito take Gressel's spot? That's not quite English, but I think we know what he means. Yes. Is it possible that Tito takes Gressel's spot? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And I, I think, I actually think that uh, Tito's best position is right is at right wing. You know, I think, I, yeah, you know, you want the right foot on the left wing, I get that, but I don't know if that's like his best role in terms of like cutting in and shooting or what have you. Um, but yeah, from the right, you know, he scored that mazy goal from the right side. And I think he's pretty effective on the right. So I, you know, man, I really, I hope that Tito does stay. He's such a good player. He's versatile, you know, and he's talented. He is that kind of talent that can, uh, he can be a game winner, you yeah. know? And so, uh, yeah, I think that he still has a role for this team, and I hope that DeBoer is open-minded about that. Yeah, Tito is the definition of mercurial. He is, yeah, a guy that is, uh, can be divisive at times, sure, sure, for a manager that, you know, is like maybe looking for a little bit more discipline at times and whatnot, but, uh, I mean, that unpredictability is something that can change games for you sometimes. and. Uh, you know, if he is still part of the setup, I hope, yeah, that he can maybe prove himself again uh, and that he is a guy that, uh, you know, can provide the double digits goals and assists from the, the right side again. Yeah. Uh, but 
that does it for the mailbag and pretty much the entire show, except for the question of the day. So guys, this is it. Gressel is officially gone. Who do you guys think is going to be the heir apparent for the right back, right wing back role? Definitely get in the comments, let us know what you think. But guys, that's it for us today. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video because it really does help us a lot and smash that like button on this video. And for Mark, I'm AJ, thank you guys so much for watching.